Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Greetings to, greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hope you're doing well this morning, church. And uh, I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to take uh, some time, 15 to 20 minutes, to share from the Word today. And uh, we've been on a journey learning about the fruits of the Spirit. And uh, recently, we also wrapped up a week of prayer and meditation, uh, waiting on the Spirit and uh, tarrying and waiting for Him to work within us. And uh, I have been led to share with you this morning about brokenness and being broken and breaking in front of Him. And uh, just sharing some thoughts and scriptures and verses uh, that I came about while thinking through this topic and uh, reading through the word and uh, as we read through the scripture in many places it mentions about breaking ourselves down and uh, coming to his presence in his presence and that's a trait that God um, expects of us as Christians and followers of him hallelujah let me say a quick word of prayer before I get into his word father lord Jesus we thank you for your presence, O oh Lord, in our midst, O oh Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to worship you and praise you, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for being, Lord, in our midst today, Holy Spirit, and thank you for uh, being with your people today, O oh Lord, and preparing us to be in your presence. Uh, Lord, we pray that you speak through me to your people, Lord Jesus, and uh, we pray that um, it's a blessing, O oh Lord, and that uh, many, many are blessed, O oh Father, Lord, uh, through what you have to um, Lord, uh, preach and uh, bring to your people, O oh Father. Thank you for listening to our prayers. Amen. Amen. So as I was uh, thinking through how I start the message today, uh, I th a lot of the preachers that we have here at our church do a phenomenal job with a great quote uh, or a great story. Um, I find it very interesting when I see the different profiles of the speakers that share, uh, you know, especially from the English message, uh, they have their own take and perspective as they bring in uh, based off of what they do every day. And so I didn't have anything uh, as sophisticated, but something that crossed my mind I was going through my memory bank was a lot of the nursery rhymes that we learn when uh, growing up has to do a lot with brokenness. And that's not something that I've, meant, I've, that I've noticed before. Um, probably Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star and Baba Black Ship does not fall in that category. But the London Bridge is falling down. Jack and Jill went up the hill and you know what happened after. Ring a ring a roses, everyone falls down. And the infamous Humpty Dumpty who sat on the wall, who fell down <laughs> and broke and the king's and uh, all his men could not put him together again. But I'm thankful for a savior who can put all our brokenness, however broken we are today, put us together and make everything beautiful. Everything beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. I hope you found that thought funny. But brokenness, being broken by the news that we see around us, by the words that we hear, that come out of our mouth and that what we hear, the actions that we experience the results of, or the actions we take on others because of an emotion that we are in or the, the state of mind that we are in at that time. Brokenness is all around us. So the first thing I wanted to share when it comes to brokenness is many of us here today likely feel broken inside due to many of the things that I probably just mentioned. Um, and in fact, that's something that is common amongst us. You know, a lot of things that we bring together on prayer line and pray and share with each other. Brokenness allows us to connect as Christians. Not just as Christians amongst our fellow brethren and sisters, but also to the world outside us. Allows us to share the word and the ministry and brokenness as sad as it can be in the perspective that you see it, unites us. It brings us closer to Christ. In Psalms 34, 18, we read the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Hallelujah. That scripture is a reminder that he does not abandon those of us that are brokenhearted. We may be feeling vulnerable. We may be at a very, very low point in our life. Uh, we may be broken and struggling. You may be struggling to come 
to may you may have thought twice to be in service today or uh, don't know what the purpose is of you being in service today you may be going through a season in life that uh, you are really struggling but remember his promise that he is near to the broken hearted and save save those who are crushed in the spirit it is important when we are going through those phases that we are in church that we are amongst our brethren that we are amongst our sisters that we are communing and fellowshipping with those with that community and uh, that is where we get our strength because our strength all comes from Christ um he doesn't sit afar expecting you to figure all of it out and that's the beauty of Christ and that's the beauty of our savior he expects us to come as we are and rely on him for everything to be fixed and uh the bible says he fe- he heals the broken hearted and binds up our wounds while i was preparing for today i came across a quote that said brokenness is a blessing because it puts us on the road to a breakthrough it may not feel like it at the moment but brokenness puts us on the path to a breakthrough um you may be you know uh, hurting silently about uh yeah many things like i said words or actions it may be a mental uh type of brokenness that you feel maybe financial maybe physical you may be hurting you may be fighting a mental burden due to a situation at home uh you may be uh something to do with your family and maybe something to do with your school with your grades with your friendships uh maybe anxiousness of what is to come in the new semester as you prepare to go back to school in the fall how blessed are we that we have a savior in heaven who listens to our every prayer and petition that you can bring and you don't need to pray about it just yourselves but you can bring it to the uncles and aunties here to your friends that are here that are amongst you we just had a great vbs we have a very strong and great community that here rely on them and uh, you can pray an analogy when it comes to uh breaking and brokenness that i think a lot of us can relate to i'm a foodie so very fond of food so the first thing that came to mind is an egg an egg is the best analogy that i could find when it comes to break brokenness or breaking it easily breaks you know that's the one thing as growing up i knew that was the one thing you did not put in the trunk of the car it has to be sitting right beside you on the side side of the seat not sure exactly why side of the seat but that's where my mom asked me to put it so that's where i'm putting it but you have to be careful that's the nature of the egg right you have the outer shell the analogy is is ourselves our human nature the analogy to that egg shell is we don't we try to act as though we don't want to break uh we want to keep everything intact because we think that is the perfect thing is that we need to be intact and we're not going to let anything come in and break us but the reality is you have to be broken in order for use to come out of you and that's similar to an egg or like an egg only if we allow ourselves to be broken by the spirit can we be transformed into something more beautiful an egg must break for life to come out of it it must break to get into any of our wonderful cooking from all our moms and and dads that are here that cook or baked into a cake it has to break for usefulness to come out of it and for us to be for it to be transformed into something useful and uh, we need to allow similarly god to break through us we need to break down in his presence and break so that we can be useful for his kingdom and serve his purpose that broken state is to help teach us we cannot do it on our own we need help and that help is in the form of christ he can help and enable us to do anything god breaks our shell he then uses the inside like the egg that you can say and that breaking up helps us get rid of us get gets help uh, helps us to get rid of us and makes it all about him and not about us the only thing that helps that happens not helps but the only thing that happens with an egg with an egg that is not broken is what it rots that's the only thing that happens with an egg that nothing happens no pressure is applied nothing happens it sits what happens to it it rots and that is what happens if we don't allow christ and the spirit to work within us and break down in front of him and allow him to break into us we will rot 
And uh, Psalms 51, 8, the scripture says, make me, make me to hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Are, you, are we allowing our Savior, our, the Spirit, to break ourselves down? Are we having bro- are our broken bones rejoicing? The second point when it comes to brokenness is more of an inward retrospect of brokenness. So it's mindfully breaking ourselves down internally. First I talked about things that are around us that break us. Um, some, some of those are more visible. This is more of a, an intentional act that you need to take to break ourselves down in his presence. The internal, that, that act of breaking ourselves, coming at his feet, and you know, I talked about how I was led to share this message because of the, the season we were in in Taring. We should not lose that season. That season should be persistent in our lives. We need to spend time in his presence and be in his presence to... Um, be able to find our find an opportunity to break ourselves down, look at ourselves, break ourselves down in His presence, and coming to that lowly state, like I said, vulnerable and bare, seeking and waiting on Him, so that His will in our life can happen. Um, for you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. That is what it says in Psalms 51, 16 to 7. To have a broken and contrite heart. We need to, for having that, we need to break ourselves. We need to put away the me as the center of our life and it needs to be more of him. And everything revolves around him and not around me. When we go through life and enjoy the successes in life, be it small or big, uh, if you're in school, you know, maybe great grades, you know, you've studied, you've got great grades, it may be you made it to a school that you wanted to get into, uh, or it may be more material, you were able to purchase something that you really had, you had your eyes on or set your sights on, and you finally attained it, you feel that sense of victory, yes, I did it. And that's just something that builds up in, uh, as a part of daily life and as we live life and as we go through life and all of those are great but we also need to remember to spend time in his presence to break everything that we built of ourselves down we need to break that down because we have not earned anything it is only by his grace amen hallelujah in isaiah 66 1 to 2 it says heaven is my throne and the throne and the earth is my footstool what is the house that you would build for me and what is the place of my rest. All these things my hand has made, and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Being contrite, according to the dictionary, means a sincere expression of remorse and the desire of atonement. Speaking more from, you know, our, uh, being, being Christ followers. You only can be contrite in spirit if you recognize what you have, the grace that you are under, and if you hold his word close to your heart and honor it. You can only be humble and contrite in spirit if you tremble at his word. And you can only tremble at his word if you realize the weight of what is given to you, the blessing, the gift that is given to you. Only then would you realize that. Um, He is, uh, the Bible says that he is in the holy of holies, but also with him are those that have broken themselves for him. That's what it says in Isaiah. I dwell in high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the spirit of the contrite. So in short, to be rich in the spirit, you need to be broke in the flesh. To be rich in the spirit, you need to be broke in the flesh. Hallelujah. More of him less of me. So that's the second point I wanted to make is an internal retrospect of being broken, being intentional about spending the time to being broken, regardless of the busyness that we are in life. And it can happen. If we don't put time away for it, we're not going to find the time for it. And I often think of uh, uh, this analogy, and maybe I've shared this before. You know, if you 
are going to be at work, you had to do something at work, you had to do something at school, and you had a meeting with your boss or your principal or your teacher, would you miss that appointment? You very likely would not. You can't take God for granted. That comes the same, that's the same thing when it comes to God's presence. How much more, how much mightier is our Father in heaven? How much more gracious? How much more do we owe Him, our Creator, and how much we, uh, we, we do we owe Him? More than anything that we have material. If you can find the time to do that, or make it in time to be at a Thunder game, or a Suna game, or a Cowboys game, then you can make it on time to spend time with Him. Hallelujah. And the last point I wanted to make is the commission for us and the importance of the commission for us to reach the brokenhearted. It is not just feeling the brokenness, you know, uh, communing with our community and experiencing his goodness and his grace and his love. It is also sharing that love. Uh, this is a, part, it is a huge part of us being as Christians. This is the commission to us is to reach those that are bro broken. We talk about being broken and only if you go through those first two things when you're going through that phase in life when you when life is breaking you down and you have relied on him and only when things are going great or not going great and you have spent time to be in his presence and break yourself down and only when you experience him through all of those experiences will you have the power and effectiveness to be able to share that with someone else only then will it be will it let you connect and pour out of it through you when you go and do a missions outreach or talk to your friends or your brothers, only will, then will it be top of mind. Only then will it be top of mind as the first solution or thing that you do when you talk to someone or when you reach out to someone. His commission is for us when we share the good news of Christ to those around us is to also bind up that the brokenhearted. Proclaim liberty to those who are captives to the world as it says in Isaiah in the very well known scripture Isaiah 61.1. Uh, they are broken due to their captivity to the world, dependence on what they feel the world can offer. By they, I mean those that are around us in the communities that we're in, at work, at our school, wherever we are at. There are many things around the world that your friends may be captive to, but know what you have that they don't have, and don't fall for that. Only when we experience that love and the, and the conviction that we have of going through that experience can we share that love um, that experience with someone else uh, that needs needs to hear the word, needs to feel his love and presence in their state of brokenness or captivity. I'll ask the worship team to come up as I'm getting close to wrapping up. Many, many years ago when I was younger in my faith and younger in age, every time when I thought of missions, I would have a great passion to go and do the, pa do the ministry. But whenever in my head, visually I would think of going you know, downtown or talking to someone um, that may, ne may not be a follower of Christ. And just the thought of presenting the word of God to them or presenting the gospel to them would intimidate me greatly. Uh, beyond the passion, the intimidation of talking uh, to someone that you don't, because you don't know, it's, it's unpredictable, right? What are they going to do? So you think of the worst things when you picture this through your head. But when I did finally um, participate in some of the outreach ministries uh, in my walk, I found myself being able to connect because I was broken once. And I was in the miry clay and remembering that Christ pulled me out of that, allowed me to connect. And one of the, um, I think one of the most powerful moments I've had during outreach ministry has been when someone else prayed for me. We go out there thinking we are going to go pray for people and you'll be amazed at how many people pray for you. And uh, it's just a very powerful moment. So if you are in that phase in life, you may be like me when I was younger and you may be intimidated when it comes to uh, reaching out to people who um, are afflicted or captive to the addictions of the world, who are broken hearted, who may look destitute, who you may feel you may not have the words or the right verses to be able to touch them or relate, it, relate to them. Trust me, you do if you go through those first two phases. This other quote I read from Dr. Vance Havener, who was a preacher and author, was God uses broken things, broken soil to produce a crop, broken clouds to give rain, broken grain to give bread, 
broken bread to give strength and broken people to do great things hallelujah how true is that if you inspect your life or if you inspect the life or examples of many of the great examples from the bible or ministers evangelists the moments that shape their journey and walk in life is not the strengths that they had or the talents or any of that it's been the moments of weakness that shaped them the moments that they were broken that 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 touched them that is what they pour out to all of us when we listen to the word when ministers preach to us from this stage is because how god has been faithful to them in their moments and times of brokenness broken people can crush other people hurt people can hurt other people but as christians and because of the gift that we know we are able to bless people we should not be able we should not be storing that within us the world needs more of those of us that are bold to share the gospel to touch others pray for others love on others care for those and bl- and share with them the good news that we have the good news that we have that we can share with all all around the world and what a reminder that our savior jesus christ was beaten he his body had to be broken because his body was broken for us we stand here today we are unworthy but because he was broken for us hallelujah we can be in his midst we can be in his presence and we can live life i hope god has spoken to you this morning through this short message and i hope it touched you wherever you're at you may be feeling broken by the world you may be in need of an intervention uh you need to probably take some time to break yourself further in his presence and look at yourself and uh bring yourself down in his presence and under his grace grace mercy and love and uh maybe you needed some encouragement today to reach out to the community to reach out to your friends to those that are around you know that god has blessed you and reliving his grace and mercy on your life can allow you to connect and share to those that are broken know that you may have a great fall you may be broken you may be in many pieces and the things that you see around the world may not be able to put you back together but the king of kings and our father our creator and our master can put all our brokenness together and it is beautiful in his eyes and that is all that matters it does not matter what the world sees or says all that matters is us being in his presence and as you are in his presence this morning as i say a word of prayer it's not about who sits on your left or who is on your right it's about you and your father in heaven i hope you take a moment or take more than a moment as you are there here this morning to break down in his presence to lack like look at your abba father and call abba father father we thank you lord jesus we are not worthy to be here we have not earned any of it we thank you for blessing us and being with us oh lord jesus we thank you for giving us a spirit to break down in front of you oh lord we thank you for accepting us amidst all our weaknesses our failures our imperfections oh lord we thank you for making beauty out of all of our all of our imperfections oh father but thank you for uh, allowing us to be in your presence oh lord and we pray that your spirit is amongst us oh father as we continue in an attitude of worship and um, as your servant of god speaks to us oh lord the main message we pray that you continue to pour into us oh lord and as we go out into the world as we live our every day that when we go through those moments of brokenness or when we break an egg for breakfast we remember that we are only useful when you break us and you transform us and we allow you to transform us and the spirit thank you for listening to our prayers jesus in my pray amen hope these words were an encouragement to you may his name be glorified